beautiful scent of lilac here. I love this spot. It seems to change every day. I'm still not completely certain whether the tide's coming in and out, so I'm hoping to discover one way or the other while sitting here. Um, who knows the power of our feelings, the power of our thoughts. People often talk about the power of the mind. What about the power of our feelings? You know? Our feelings are also in our mind. And in our mind is also our body. You know, someone can touch your body and touch your mind. That's a pretty big deal. That's why uh, my imprecation is not to touch children. And that includes their mind. Keep your hands off their mind, their whole mind. Do you think anyone in the world really should be touching your child at this point? I mean, I don't even like the touch of other people. I don't like any of these people touching me, particularly white people. But most people. I don't mean you, seagulls. There's a couple of seagulls that have taken up spots near me here. And the heron has given us a nice flyby. I wonder about the power of my feelings. I've said so many harsh things about white people today, for instance, as a white person. Because I've lived around them. I think that's all right. I think that's, that's all right to do that. And I wonder about the power of it to clean out my own mind. You know? To look at my fellow white people and just say, you're disgusting. <laughs> you're not operating well as a whole. And you have a lot of handicaps that have been manufactured into your breeding programs. Because that's basically when you look around you and people having families, they're following a breeding program. They give, it's called an education. It's called maybe what their parents did and what the world told them to do. But it's basically a breeding program. The way people mate, the way they get married, the way they work, what they do to their children, what they send their children to and what those people do. It's a breeding program. And they may criticize it and say, I don't like it, and it's carcinogenic and all these things. But it works. Isn't it? I mean, I don't have the strong position here. I'm living in a religion that's monopolized everything for thousands of years. So, religions, religion. Before there was monotheism, there was the religion of controlling and owning people. <laughs> Evidently. Slavery systems. Barbaric slavery systems. And they're no more right now than they were then. And something can be wrong, and it can continue to be wrong, and continue to be wrong, and you can learn to live with it for 10,000 years, and it's still wrong. You might as well listen to the fact that it is wrong. It tells a story. And it changes all the other stories that are told. And that's uncomfortable if you've learned to rely upon them being a certain way. If you don't have that versatility of mind. Let what is in harmony be in harmony. Let what is in harmony be in harmony. But you'll notice that nature is changing all the time as lots of forces. So do we. I give my most vocal output to sanctuaries. Places where I find sanctuaries. And I don't always know the power of my words. In some sense today I feel it brings me closer to the family I've lost. That somehow it has the power to strike a lethal blow to layers of indoctrination and returns me back to a path of development which lay around me when I was born and whose disappearing smoke I lived around during my youth and early adulthood. And I made a point of writing poetry and books for children as well as for big children who are sick in order to bring me back, to bring my family back. Your family is more than just the people you see. It's the people you feel. It's the people you know. It's the people you share in the most incredible, knowledgeable life with. Knowledge is in everything. And so we find knowledge in everywhere we go. 
But anything that doesn't remind us and nourish our capacity to find knowledge in everything, or to find meaning in everything, and knowledge is the meaning that we make of things, and the use that that meaning has to us. And even why. Then how, how trustworthy is the knowledge if it doesn't nourish our finding knowledge and meaning in everything that has use to us? In all my life, not all my friends combined have ever asked me anything about myself. Not all of my family and friends combined have ever asked me anything about myself and so learned nothing about myself and never demonstrated any interest in what I might volunteer about myself and evidently did not. Now, what do you think of that? Does that sound like healthy people? No. But they're all people capable of having children and working and going to school. Having imaginations and sex. It's a daring admonition that I give. Of course, because I'm assuming that I'm not playing some instrumental role in this ignorance or this ambivalence. I suppose the world always asks us, you know, how powerful do you want to be? How powerful are you willing to be? Or else? Well, I don't want to be powerful with other people and I don't want to to fill every conversation with something that I have to say about myself to the exclusion of their introduction or the, their liberty at introducing any other subject that they like. Subsequent to which, they keep bringing the conversation back to whatever it is they wanted to talk about or say or evince in me with all of the feeling that they have in them. That's, that's narcissism. It's also sociopathy. It's also carcinoma of the mind. It's also a lot of abuse. It's also how society works. It's also how war functions. It's also the value and utility of accepting the perversions of living language that we are offered, artifacts of the conversion of our lives into the means of our, in total, untimely demise the perpetual carcinoma of our lives and of the paradise from whence we come. Water, air, earth, and fire. 